Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we have a review of the Netgear MS510TX switch. And this is a completely funky little switch. It is like Noah's Ark, and I think that's the only way we can describe it. This switch is a 10 port, pretty low end, low cost switch, but it has five different types of ports on it. Usually you see switches where, you know, 80 plus percent of the ports are all of one type, so that way you can do network planning for an entire environment. And so that's just kind of how switches are normally made. This is completely different. There are five different types of ports in a 10 port switch. Okay, so taking a step back, when you look at this thing from, you know, a little ways away, it just kind of looks like a 1U unit. It has some little rack gears that you can mount, so you can actually put it into a rack at the edge. It doesn't look like anything special. But then when you get to the ports, you kind of see the configuration. There are four 1 gig Ethernet ports. There are two 2.5 two gig Ethernet ports. There's two 5 gig Ethernet ports. And then we get to the 10 gig Ethernet ports. On the 10 gig side, you have an SFP plus port, and you also have a 10 G base T port. Because, well, why settle for having four types of ports when you can have five? Now, all these different ports can also run at multiple speeds, and we actually tested that, and so you do get a lot of deployment flexibility, but it's just insane that there are that many different types of ports on the switch. The other big feature on the front of the switch you're going to see is a USB port, and you can use that to do things like firmware upgrades, you can backup and restore configurations all off of that, so it kind of makes administering the switch just a little bit easier. Moving to the rear, there's like four big features. Probably the most prominent, the one that sticks out, is that you're gonna see that there's a white, not for customer use port. I think that's like a Diag port or something like that that Netgear can use, and yet it has a very prominent position on the back because, I don't know, maybe at the lower end of the segment, that's okay, and that's what we have. There's also a Kensington lock port, and that makes a lot of sense. And when I used to do consulting, we used to have environments where you have to worry about your laptop not being there if you went and got coffee. And so you can kind of see in some edge deployments, especially if you have a $200, $250 device, you kind of want to make sure that that thing can get locked down. The other two big features you're going to see are a AC input port, so you can you know power the thing. And then the other one is that there's a sticker that has the model number, serial number, and it also has the MAC address. Inside the switch, you can see that it's actually very sparse. You have a motherboard that has a forest of heat sinks, and that's really for the switch chips as well. As for the management controller, this is a smart managed switch, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. You can also see that there's an internal power supply. We really like that. I mean, we did reviews recently of the Microtik CRS and CSS 326s, and they had external power bricks, and really, that's not as good. This, this internal version would like much better. The third big feature that you're going to see inside is you're going to see a little 40 millimeter fan. It's very quiet, but you know, there technically is active cooling in this. And so that's there. So from a hardware perspective, this is super interesting and it's just something totally different. But let's talk a little bit about the management side. The Netgear MS510TX management situation is that it uses Netgear's kind of standard SMB management solution. And so there's a web GUI. It's relatively easy to use, so you don't have to go learn some kind of archaic proprietary CLI. You can just go and click, 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 click and get everything that you need to done. At the same time, let's kind of face it, it's not great in some areas as well. It looks like it came straight out of the late 1990s, maybe early 2000s in terms of an interface. It certainly does not look at like a 2020 solution. Beyond that, there's some kind of weird security stuff too. Like for example, there's no HTTPS option. You can do HTTP only. So if you need to configure your network, you're never gonna do that over a secure HTTP link. Another kind of weird feature is that there's no user login. You don't get to go pick your own username. Instead, you just get to put in a password. And the default password is password. I mean, think about it. That is literally on the list, like number one, as the worst password you can have is password. And the default password is password. Most admins are going to change it. But, you know, let's face it. There are people that are not going to change it. It means there are devices out there that have no user logon. Plus, they use literally the worst password possible, which is password. Yikes. So while this solution, this management solution is easy to use and it, it's very functional. At the same time, it's kind of like one of those things that's like, hey, Netgear, y'all need to go and fix this thing and maybe give it a little update. So we did a quick performance check of the Netgear MS510TX switch, and we saw basically what you'd expect. All the ports worked at the rated speeds, and that didn't just include the maximum rated speed, it also kind of you know worked at the lower speed. So you could take like, say, a five gig ethernet port and run at two and a half gig speeds. We tested it, it works. And what that practically means is that you get about, you know, 39, 40% more performance 
than some of the other switches that we saw, like the 10 port Netgear it's a GS110 EMX switch, which is a managed kind of lower end switch that was eight one gig ports plus two 10 gig ports. And you, you know, you actually do see a say 40 ish percent uplift over that, which is great. Let's talk really quickly about the Netgear MS510TX power consumption. Now at the lower end, you're gonna see at idle, it can use, you know, we're gonna call it say 10, 11 watts-ish. And at the higher end, when you kind of get it going, you know, we got it into the kind of lower 20 watt range and the actual spec sheet is more closer to about 26 watts maximum. So, you know, it actually uses a fair amount of power. Noise is rated at 21 dBA, so it's not silent, but if you're a little bit away from the switch, you're not gonna hear it. It's more or less quiet and it's quiet enough that you could have it in an office right next to you and it probably won't annoy you. It's pretty hard not to admire the type of switch that the Netgear MS510TX is. I mean, it's something totally different that we just don't normally see. So we actually looked at the data sheet and like, hey, like, why did you guys build something like this, right? It's so different. And in the data sheet, there's actually a couple different application scenarios that they have. And one of them is that there's an SMB office. And that SMB office has a server, it has a NAS, it has some other devices that are hooked up all different speeds. And, you know, we can kind of see that, like, maybe this is a switch, but, you know, why you have this exact mix of ports, I have no idea. The $210 street price, there's really another use case, and that's... If you just need to do some media conversion, you need to go from a 10G based T to SFP plus, plus you need a couple other ports to throw in there as well. This is a switch that can totally do that. Okay, now Netgear desperately needs to upgrade their management solution. I mean, it's straight stuck out of like the late 90s, early 2000s. It is not a 2020 solution by any stretch of the imagination. A lot of these switches end up getting deployed and we just kind of expect that a Netgear switch you can deploy and just kind of leave and you know, look at it and kind of forget about it. And yet, you know, you do really want something like that, having a default password, a password and no user log on. I mean, that's kind of really scary if you think about it. At this price range, we really want to talk really quickly about this switch versus the GS110 EMX that we reviewed. When we purchased the two switches, this switch was like $210. The EMX, I think was like 190 or something like that. So it was like, you know, $20-ish Delta. It wasn't really that much. I think sometimes even it's more like a $10 Delta. And at that difference, I think that the MS510TX actually makes a lot more sense. Still, it's larger, it's not completely passive, so there are definitely reasons that you'd want to get the GS110 EMX instead. And there's a big difference between when we started doing the review and now that the review is complete, and that's that the price delta has actually opened up and it's now more in the $50 to $60 range, and at that price delta, yeah, I mean, we can't just say it's a home run, just go buy this one over that one because, you know, price-wise, it's there's a bigger difference. With all that stuff aside, it's hard not to admire a switch like this. I mean, let's face it, this thing is a funky little switch. People don't make switches like this. I mean, this is just, it goes in the face of like all of what people do in terms of networking. They just decided, like Necker just decided, hey, we're gonna make a 10 port switch and we're gonna have five different types of ports. I mean, it's just insane. It's mind blowing. And we have a whole pipeline of switches that you know we've done we're doing, and none of them are like this. Literally the best way to talk about this is this is the Noah's Ark of switches, and that's the way to just kind of think of it. Overall, this is a pretty cool little switch, and if you need something like this, you know, it's a great option. But on the other hand, you know, we do definitely want you to take a second, look at the data sheet, look at the switch, and decide, you know, is this the right switch for me? Is this the right port count, port mix? There are a lot of things to kind of look at, but you know, for some people, you're gonna really like this thing. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. While you're here, why don't you subscribe to our YouTube channel, check out the STH main site, or look at some of the other things that we have already uploaded on YouTube. Again, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.